Welcome back to another Micro Starting Wednesday. My name is Derek. Today we're going to be going over this iPad Air 4 that's not charging. I just took the screen off and took a look at the charge port and it looks good. In fact, when I plug it into charge, it seems like it wants to, but I get no response on the display. And even after a long period of time on a charger, it doesn't charge. Let's see if we can figure out what the issue might be. So let's get into the video. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is, let's take out the shield here. And what I wanna do is perform a little bit of tests here. So we're gonna put our multimeter in continuity mode. We've got the battery isolated here with this piece of plastic. We'll put our red probe on ground. And I'm gonna just start probing around and checking it against the schematic to see if we can find anything interesting. But that's sides ground, 0.45. Now the issue with the iPad Air 4 is although there is a board view that's available, it doesn't really have any details on it besides just telling you what connects to what, but it doesn't tell you what the lines are or what the values should be read at using a program like ZXW or JC Drawing. Maybe there is a program out there that has it right now, but I'm not aware of one. Okay, so this side's ground is a zero, zero, and this is really close to a dead short. I mean, I would call that a short. Let's go take a look and see what, so this is the component that I tested. Now it could be that there is an issue with a component that's on this line. Maybe there's an issue with NAND, um, but there are other things that are connected to this line. So let's see if we can isolate the issue. And in fact, now that I'm looking at it, there's like a weird dark spot right there on the PMIC. You get, you get. Let me zoom in on that. You see that spot? Looks like it almost got like overheated. But let's see if there's any correlation between this cap here and something in this area. All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, so this is the bottom corner of the NAND right here. And this is the component we were testing. Here was the ground and then here is the line that appeared short. And it does have, there's a possibility that something's going on here with NAND, but looking over here, oh, look at that. Okay, so this is exactly where the, the, the gray spot is. So let's take a look, I flip this around. It's gonna be upside down, but look at that kind of charred area. It lines up perfectly, even though it's upside down now, with these three dots. Let's test real quick these components and see if we get a even closer short. All right, so probably just gonna have to trust me on this one. So this side of this capacitor is ground and we've got 0 .0000, 0 .001. So yeah, this is very interesting. What we can do to confirm the area, the area of issue is inject some voltage over in uh, maybe even just on that cap there and see where the heat comes from under thermal camera. I'm guessing that we're gonna have a PMIC issue here just based off of what, what I'm seeing. So sometimes the visual artifacts give you kind of a good idea of what, uh, what the repair needs to be. I think that's what we're gonna have, but let's confirm it real quick. All right, let's take a look now that we've got this set up. I'm going to put got my DC power supply connected up. We're going to go in and we're going to touch the inside of this capacitor here. I'm going to look in this area again. It might have just been me, but it looked like the only place that heat was coming from was right here. So let's, but it was like under the shield. So let's, let's look at this again. All right. In three, two, yeah, there's a teeny spike in heat over there. Let's see if I can make it a little bit more clear. Three, two, one. Yep. Okay, so the heat is definitely coming from this area. Let's see if we can figure out what is actually happening there. All right, so what we have under there, although this is backwards, this is upside down compared to the drawing over here, is we've got a bunch of capacitors here 
with this one coil. I'm wondering if, I still don't like the way that PMIC looks, but we're getting heat from under the shield. And it might just be that it's heated up this area because it's connected to the PMIC when we actually have a short here. Maybe it did kill the PMIC as well, but we're gonna have to, let's just try to get under the shield here and see if we can figure it out. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this. You could kind of grind it off. What I like to do is just carefully take a blade and I'll score the metal and just kind of carve down into it, creating a, a nice deep groove, trying not to leave metal shards on the board, basically creating a weak point in the frame. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And then I'm gonna come down here and we'll cut there and along the side here just like that i'm going to make those a bit deeper and then we're going to just open this up like you would uh, the old-fashioned way to open any tinfoil can we're just going to shear the the top off now i'm going to take just a pair of these snippers here and we're going to try to cut into the frame and we'll shear it away doesn't always go exactly where you want it to go there we go now it's following my line that I made. <laughs> I'm making a, a mess of the sticker here next to it, but that's no big problem. Now, you probably already spotted it, but something here doesn't look like the rest. Take a look at that cap there. It's cracked. Let's get a really close up view on that. You can see it's cracked here, cracked there. It's discolored. It's not silver like its sides. It's got like this oxidation to it. Let's see if the short goes away when we remove it. For fun, let's take a, a look at it uh, under thermal, just so we can see it light up like a Christmas tree. Boom, look at that, super bright. Okay, let's pop it off. Now there's a couple ways to remove this. You could desolder it if you wanted to, but I like this method, which is to take the edge of the tweezers here, get down it on the side of it, Give it a nice get big uh, flick. Oh, and it just broke. Let's see if we can get a little lower. It's probably too high. Just like that. And we'll snap it off, revealing the pads below if I really wanted to put one back here. I'm not gonna take the time to do that because the data is what's kind of important in this one. All right, I'm just gonna take a quick look with our multimeter here. Put our probe on ground, red probe on ground. We're gonna go in and I wanna test or remove the component. Here we get point. All right, we get five, five, four. Interesting, it's no longer short. Okay. So we go back over to the first component that we tested. We get 50. This might power on now. I'm still a little concerned about this area, but it'd be interesting to see what the iPad does right now at this point. It could be that it was just getting hot because that cap was bad. All right, let's go ahead and just Put that back down for right now. We'll connect up the display and the digitizer. Okay, and now let's take a look. Actually, let's put back real quick the charge port and its two screws. Okay, we'll pull off the battery connector, plastic protector that we had, and let's screw this down. And let's plug it in and see if we get any life whatsoever. That would be a no. So it's definitely the PMIC as well. And that's a part that I have to order. All right, so that kind of leaves us at a pause point for now. We've got to order in the PMIC. What most likely happened was the capacitor there shorted out and someone continued to try to put power to it for an extended period of time, causing that area to overheat, killing surrounding components like the PMIC that's on that line. All right, so I've gone ahead and done some more testing around the PMIC, and I'm getting a bunch of weird readings. Weird because they kind of feel off. Now, I don't have a good board to compare to or schematics that show the values that I'm supposed to be reading, but I'm getting a lot of weird numbers around it. So apart from it looking bad, being attached to the component that was bad, once I pull off the PMIC, I'll be able to kind of confirm if those values change. So in one of the next videos, I'm going to show you guys how to pull the PMIC off the board, prep the board, and put back a new PMIC, along with some more testing to see if we can fix this iPad Air 4. But at least hopefully this has given you an idea 
how to diagnose and troubleshoot a short. By probing around on the board with the multimeter until you find a component that is shorted, finding what it's connected to, and troubleshooting it with, ver with a variety of methods today by eye and with a thermal camera. Freeze spray is another technique by feel. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.